You see, it's easy to talk, but you know, in order to change, you got to do something. <laughs> Amen, somebody. Uh, go with me to Ezekiel 44, verse 19. Let's start there. Ezekiel 44, verse 19. Praise the Lord. Ezekiel 44 and verse 19. And when they go forth into the outer court, even into the outer court to the people, they shall put off, somebody say put off, their garments wherein they minister and lay them in the holy chambers and they shall, somebody say put on, put on other garments and they shall not sanctify the people with their garments, amen. We give God glory for his most holy and divine word. You may be seated in the presence of the life-changing King, Jesus Christ. And, and for a few minutes, I want to talk from this subject, uh, uh, from this uh, title. With all the clothes in my closet, why can't I change? With all them clothes, with all the outfits in my closet, why can't I change. The Bible constantly talks about putting off and putting on things. And we are familiar with, you know, taking things off and putting things on. Amen, somebody. Now, in order to put something on, somebody say, I first got to take something off. Amen. Now, when we come into the body of Christ to be born again, the Bible teaches us that old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. So, therefore, God is going to give us some new clothes. Amen, somebody? Yeah, yeah. Amen. Uh, if you <laughs> have confessed a hope in Jesus Christ and you still are saying something wrong. Come on, somebody. Because I read my Bible. Everywhere Jesus met, uh, someone came in contact with Jesus. They never left him the same. Amen, somebody. So change is something that we should be accustomed to and, and something that we should look to do on a daily basis. Come on, somebody. How many folk in here, you know, wear the same outfit all week? Where y'all at? Raise your hand. All week, you got the same outfit on. No, we don't do that in the natural, dude. Come on, somebody. Because God has blessed us to have a closet full of, come on, somebody, clothes. Therefore, we change from day to day, from season to season. Come on, somebody. We don't wear the same things in spring that we wear in winter. Come on, somebody. We have to learn how to dress or what? Appropriately so that we can be comfortable. There are some things that, that we still need to put off concerning the old man. Let's look at another scripture. Go with me now uh, to Exodus 3 and 5. And he said, draw not, not hither, but put off thy shoes off thy feet, for the place where thou standest is what? Holy ground. Amen. You see, Moses had to take his shoes off because where he was going to talk with God was a holy place in the holy ground. And we have to realize that we can't keep on the same shoes that we use through the week in the world when we come to church. Come on, somebody. I need to have my praising shoes on when I roll up in here. Come on, somebody. Amen. Huh? So we, we have to change. Come on, somebody. Somebody say, I got to change. I got to change. Hmm? Now, God has given us all kind of scriptures in the Bible that tells us what we need to take off and what we need to put on. Amen. Come on, somebody. Huh? Huh? Now, where do we keep our clothes? Somebody say, I keep my clothes in my closet. Ain't it odd that God said that we should steal away into 
our secret closet. Come on, somebody. Amen. Anybody ever read that scripture where he said, when you pray, go into a what? A secret closet and, and pray to God and, and God going to reward you openly for what you do in a secret. Come on, somebody. See, we need to understand that prayer changes people. Prayer don't change things. I know that prayer changes things, but prayer changes people. People change things. Come on, somebody. So if you ain't praying, you ain't never going in your closet, then you ain't changing. I said, if you don't pray, then you're not going in your closet, and you're not going to change. With all the clothes in there. With all them clothes that God done gave you. Come on, somebody. With all the word that God has given you. With all the scriptures. Come on, somebody. With all the evidence that God has given us. But if you don't never go in the closet, you're never going to change. And sometimes, you know, there comes a point when you, you know, when you're a babe that, you know, you have to change them. Are y'all still with me? They don't understand how to change their clothes yet. Come on, somebody. So you have to change them until they get of age to where they can learn how to change themselves. Come on, somebody. You see, if you're a babe in Christ, come on, somebody. Then God got to send somebody to help you change. Oh, I wish I had some folks that. Come on, God got to send somebody to help you change because you're a baby. But after a while, after you've been in church long as some of y'all have, You ought not, he need no help to change no more. Come on, somebody. You ought to know how to change yourself. Somebody said, I can change my own attitude. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Come on, say amen. Huh? Huh? You know, anybody ever? Saw a loved one, someone you care about, and be like, I don't think that what you got on ain't quite matching. Come on, somebody. I know my wife has done me many times. You need to change. Hmm. Come on, because she loved me and she don't want me looking crazy. She'll be like, you need to you need to go back in the car. You need to change. Come on, somebody, because some things don't really go together. <laughs> Speaking in tongues and lying don't. <laughs> Come on, sister, that don't go together. That don't match. Huh? Huh? Come on, somebody. Hmm? You matching? You matching it? What, let me see that. Do that there for me. Yeah. Give me a sock. Yeah, you good. Huh? So your socks supposed to match your shoes or your pants? That's what they said. Or your belt? Yeah, come on, somebody. Yeah, yeah. Huh? Some out of some out of match. Now, <laughs> what I'm trying to get you to understand that your life ought to match the testimony that you got saying that you love the Lord. Come on, somebody. Then your life ought to match that. The things that you do ought to match. Come on, somebody. Huh? And when they don't, then you need to what? Now, I might not need to change my whole outfit. I might just need to change my pants. Somebody. I can keep my shirt. Somebody said I can keep my shirt. But I need to change my pants. Huh? Go with me now to some scriptures I want to read in, into your hearing. Go to Nehemiah 4 and 23. Hallelujah. Nehemiah 4 and 23. Go there with me. For a minute. Nehemiah 4 and 23. 
it says, So neither I nor my brethren nor my servants nor the men of the guard which followed me, none of us put off our clothes, saving that everyone put them off for what? That everyone put them off for what? See, somebody say, somebody says, sometimes, sometimes you just got to take them off so you can wash them. Come on, somebody. Anybody ever did any work and you got dirty and you'd be like, I can't wait to get these clothes. Come on, somebody. But if you ain't doing no work and getting dirty and sweaty, then, you know what I'm saying, you don't really need to, what? Change. We say we love the Lord and work for the Lord, but seems like we never need a washing. Bible says that such were some of you, but now ye been what? Washed and cleansed in the blood of the Lamb. See, sometimes I just need to come get my clothes washed. Anybody in here? Come on, somebody. When I'm at the altar, I realize that I need a washing. Come on, somebody. Uh huh. But don't nobody get clean with their clothes on. Oh, I will. Come on. Come on, somebody. You ain't sitting in the bathtub with your clothes on. Ephesians 4, verse number what? 21. Go there with me. And I'm almost done because somebody needs to change their clothes today. Mm hmm. Yeah. Nehemiah 4, no, Ephesians 4, right? 21, go there with me. Mm. Ephesians 4, verse 21. If so be that ye have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in who? Jesus that you put off, somebody said put off, concerning the former conversation. Hmm? Let me pause right there. Put off concerning the former conversation. See, I don't talk the way I used to talk 20 years ago. Where y'all at? Come on. My conversation ain't the same. Come on, somebody. 20 years ago, I was talking about, you know, getting high, drinking, and doing all kind of foolishness, going out to the club. That was my conversation, man. But now my conversation has changed. I want to talk about the love of God and the love of Christ. That's the conversation I want to talk about. If you ain't, come on, talking about that, then, you know, come on, somebody. Huh? But you had to put off, concerning the former conversation, the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust, and be what renewed in the spirit of your mind. Somebody say, and that ye what put on. See, God, when God tells you to put some, take something off, he's going to tell you to put something on. Come on, somebody. That you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Wherefore, putting away what? Come on, somebody. Speak every man truth with his what neighbor, for we are members one of another. Amen. Be angry and sin not. <laughs> Amen. Come on, somebody. I, I, I used to be a hothead, but I ain't no hothead no more. Come on, somebody. I used to go off and cuss folk out just like at a drop of a dime. Come on, somebody. One think nothing of it. Shouldn't have been messing with me. They had it coming. Where y'all at? But now, I just keep my mouth shut and pray for folk. Come on, somebody. I, 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 my testimony is that, you know, if you'd have, you'd have knew me 20 years ago, you might not have liked me. I know you love me now, but. Because God done changed my clothes. Come on, somebody. Done, come on. Hmm? Colossians 3, verse number 8. 
And I'm getting ready to let you go in the closet. Hallelujah. Colossians 3, 8 says, but now ye also put off all these. Somebody said, I got to take off the most though. But now ye also put off all these. Anger, wrath. Where y'all, come on, wrath. That, that, that's where y'all let them get back, get back at you, folks. Where y'all at? That's all right. Come on, come on, keep it real with me. That's all right. I'll get you on later down. I'll get you on down the road, man. Got you. Hmm? Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Come on, don't act like we, come on, don't act like some of us didn't have no filthy mouth. Come on now. Lie not <laughs> one to another, seeing that ye have put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of the image of him that created him. Huh? Well, there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcision nor uncircumcision, barbarian, Scythian, bond nor free, but Christ is all and in all. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercy, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long suffering. Come on, somebody. Hmm? I, I, I can put this stuff now. I, I, I used to come put up with nothing, but now I got some long suffering on. Come on, somebody. Huh? Amen. I know how to look over some stuff. Come on, somebody. And understand that, hey, man, you know, some folk just ain't got it yet. Amen. Ephesians 6. Ephesians 6, verse 11. Hallelujah. Ephesians 6, verse 11. Anybody? Anybody ready to change? Come on, somebody. Anybody ready to change? Come on. First, you got to realize that you need to change. See, if you don't think you need to change, you won't change. Mm -hmm. Amen. I know, I know some of y'all done said to yourself before, you know, just simply, you know, I need to change clothes. I need to change clothes. Amen. Hmm? It says, put on the whole armor of God that ye may be able to stand against the what? The wiles of the devil. Huh? The reason sometimes you can't stand nothing, every little thing come your way. Come on, somebody. Here you go, crying, falling out, I ain't going to make it. Come on. Huh? It's because you ain't got on what you need. Huh? Come on, you underdressed. Come on, somebody. If it's the middle of the winter and you outside with some short pants on and short sleeves on, now you finna freeze. Come on, somebody. Because you're underdressed. You're not dressed for the weather. Huh? Put on the whole armor of God. You may be able to stand against the wives of the devil. Verse 12, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day and having done all stand. Stand therefore having your loins girded about with truth. Somebody say cover up your private parts. <laughs> Come on somebody. Say I have to start with my underwear. Oh I wish I had some. Come on somebody. 
there's an order to everything. Come on, somebody. And the first thing is to get your underwear on. Amen. Cover up your private, man. Amen, somebody. And, 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 and I hope your underwear clean. And ain't full of holes like some folk. Come on, somebody. Stand therefore having your loins girded about with, with what truth and having on the breastplate of what righteousness <laughs> and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith where we shall quench the fiery darts of the wicked and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is what the word of God praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. And for me that uh, that utterance may be given unto me that I may open my mouth only to make known of the mystery of the gospel. Amen. Praise the Lord. Galatians 3 and 27 says that when we come into the word of God, and we come into the kingdom, when we get saved, we're supposed to put on Christ. Galatians 3 and 27. Amen. Let me read that into your hearings. Galatians 3 and 27 says, For as many of you have been baptized what into Christ, have what put on Christ. Amen. That means we ought to be walking around, amen, with Christ on us so folk can see Christ. Amen. And when we don't have him on, come on, somebody. Amen. And, and just to be honest, sometimes we don't have him on. Come on, keep it real now. We can be in the house and still not have Christ on. <sighs> Matthew 6 and 5, and I'm going to close with this one. Go with me, Matthew 6, 5. I want to show you about this. Go into your car. I want to show that scripture. Everybody going to know what's that. That's that. Matthew six, verse five. And what does it say? It says, "And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites." Mm -hmm. Ah, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets, that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you. They have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, enter into thy what? Closet. And when thou hast shut the door, pray to thy father which is in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward what openly. Amen. Amen. If you don't know, and, and, th and this is right before Jesus began to teach his disciples how to pray. Are y'all still with me? So, if you haven't learned how to pray and talk to your God, then you don't know how to change your clothes. Come on, somebody. You don't know how to change. So, therefore, you need somebody, what, to pray for you, to help you change. Come on, somebody. So, really, when you're saying, I need prayer, you're saying, man, I need a change. Yeah. Come on, somebody. You don't like the situation you're in? Come on, somebody. You don't like the... Come on, you don't like what you got on. You don't like this. I need prayer. I need a change. See? The only thing that don't change are things that are artificial. Fake. Dead. Come on. Huh? If it's alive, oh, it's changing. Come on, somebody. Now, truth be told, you know, I still got it going on, but I ain't, I don't look as good as I used to look. Still look good, but I don't look good as I used to look. Come on, somebody. Come on, where y'all at? Come on, man. Hmm? Hmm? Huh? 
because I'm alive, I'm changing. Trees, let's just use trees for example. A tree that's alive, in the fall, you know what's going to happen? The leaves going to fall off. Now in the springtime, he's going to put lean, the leaves back on. Come on, somebody. Because he's alive. So if you're alive, change is going to come. You know, these plants right here, they fake. You know, every, every time we come in here, they're going to look exactly. Come on, somebody. They're not alive. Come on, somebody. They look nice, but they're never going to change. How many folk can, come on, somebody, proclaiming Christ and look good, but don't ever. Woo, and, and, and stop lying like this is just how you is. Come on, thank you. That's how you want to be. That ain't just you ain't got to stay like that. I know that might be your favorite outfit, but you can change. You just don't want to change. Come on, some come on, somebody. I ain't the only one that didn't want to change. I know I needed to, but I just didn't want to. I know we got in our closet, we got them outfits that, that, that come on, our favorite outfit. Well, y'all, let somebody, you, come on, now, you, when you put that on, you know you clean. I don't need nobody to say nothing. Tell me when I put this on. I'm ready to step out now. Come on. We can do that in the natural. Why can't we do it in the spirit? God has given us all kind of things to change and to put off and put on. Come on, somebody. Come on. Uh, amen. And if you're too young to know how, God will send somebody to help you change. But you got to first say, I need to change. Oh, Lord, I need to change. Change me so I can change my circumstances. Come on, somebody. This needs to be our prayer. Lord, change me so I can change my circumstances. Because as long as I'm the same, as long as I'm wearing the same thing, doing the same thing, ain't nothing going to change. Ain't nothing going to change. Ain't nothing going to change. Come on, somebody. Hmm? God bless you. I love my wife, but I don't need my wife to change clothes. Y'all with me? I'm a grown enough, mature enough to, to pick out my own clothes and, and change my own clothes. Amen? And a God is expecting for me and, and you to change your own clothes. He's expecting you to grow up in this thing so you can change your own clothes. Get in the word and change. Amen. We want to open up the altar for change. <laughs> change. I, I need a change. I need a change. I need a change. Not my husband, not my wife. I need a change. It's a personal thing. Come on, somebody. Now, if you are all right with what you where you at, you are all right, fine. You don't need a change. Thank God you got changing mentality and know how to change. But if you just hear the day, you know I need a change. I need a change. Come on down to the altar. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Because change is good. It is so good. Man, I, I, I want you to be able to see this the way God is showing it to me. You know, when you get that new outfit and put it on for the same time, I don't care what nobody says. It feels good to look good. It feels good to look good. Come on, somebody. And this, the Lord wants us to what? Look good. So we can feel good. Hallelujah. That which is natural, so it is in the spirit. First that which, that which is natural, then that which is spiritual. Come on, somebody. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to be the change that we want. We're going to be the change that we want. Hallelujah. Amen. And we ain't, we're going finish, to finish. stop worrying about trying to change other folks' clothes. We just going to worry about keep, make sure. Man, come on, somebody. I ain't got time. Come on. Come on. 
Well, first, we got to, you know, change our own clothes and, and, and before we can really help change anybody else anyway. Amen? Hmm? The hmm? Bible says, why are you worried about <laughs> the moat that's in your brother's eye and, the, and forgetting about the beam that's in your own eye? Come on, somebody. Hmm? The song said, work on me, Lord. Work on me, Lord. Come on, somebody. Hmm? Let's work on me, Lord. And you get to them when you get ready. But right now, Lord, work on me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, lift our hands to the Lord. Come on, lift our hands to the Lord. Thank you, Lord, today. For the word that comes forth that says that yes, we too can change. We don't have to say how we are. We don't have to stay where we are. In the things that we're in, God, we can change. So, God, our prayer today, in, as we enter into this closet right now, this large closet called the word of God that you've given on us to us to go into and change as we will. So, God, in Jesus' name, lead us to scriptures, lead us to word that will help change us in the spirit, God. And we thank you forevermore for the blessing you've given us in the natural that we can go and change as we want through seasons, through days, in the name of Jesus. In the natural, our closets are full, and we thank you that you keep them full and replenish them, God. But now we want to focus on the spiritual clothing, the humility, the love that you want us to have on all the time. Come on, somebody, the meekness the compassion for other folks. Let us put these things on on a daily basis, God. The folk will see us and see you glory because they see that, them, man, they looking better. They doing better. Come on, somebody. Because of what God is doing in our life. And Father, we thank you for the change that begins in us. And once we change, God, we're going to change our situation. In the name of Jesus. Somebody say, I'm changed. I'm changed. I ain't the same way I was when I came in. Come on, somebody. Now, I know you don't see it in the natural. But in the spirit, a change has already come. Come on, somebody. A change is already come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the beautiful part about it, every time we come into the God, you know what he want to do? He want to change something else. Woo-wee. Come on, somebody. He told the rich young ruler, said, man, you look good. He said, Lord, I done did all. I done kept all the commandments and did all these good things that, that you said I should do in the commandments. I've done them all. He, he was like, what? Well, you look good. He said, but you're lacking one thing. Let's mess your whole outfit up. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. You can have the wrong hat on, mess it all up. He said, you lacking one thing. One thing, one thing. One thing. Come on, somebody. Stop lacking one thing. Just one thing. Just one. That's a blessing. Just one thing. So, Lord, we thank you that you love us enough to keep sending your son Jesus to keep changing us in the name of Jesus. So, Lord, we bless you and we give you glory. And we receive the change in the name of Jesus. Somebody say amen. Praise the Lord. Come on, bless the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Yes, Lord, we bless you today. There may be someone here today that's never received Jesus. We want to give you an opportunity to come. Because until you have the Lord into your life and in your heart, you can't change. That's impossible. There's no way you can change. 
I'm a witness that the Lord will change you. I'm a witness that he will change you. Transform you. Come on, somebody. Renew your mind if you allow him in Jesus' name. Maybe you're here and you don't have a church home. We give you an opportunity to come and unite with us today. We